warrant the order in the court, yeah. Dan, get that dog out from under that stove. This place smells like a monkey cage here. First case on the docket, Katie Anderson. Yes, sir, that's me. Thirty days in jail. That's me. Lock her up, Dan. Next case, Jim Williams. Bring him along. Your name William? No, sir. My name's James Fairfax Montague Williams. I come from Henrico County, Judge. That's where I come from. Nobody cares where you come from. It's where you're going to go from here, I want to know. You're charged by Officer Gray with feloniously cutting and wounding the body and person of Floyd Galt. What about it? Well, Judge, I want to plead not guilty. That's what I want to do. Have you a lawyer? No, sir. I don't want no lawyer messing around me. But I certainly would like to have a couple of good witnesses if you got them. How old are you? I'm just 24. You'll be just 25 when you get out. Lock him up, Dan. What do you want, nigga? Well, Judge, I want to get out of here. That's about all I want. What's your name? My name's George Washington. You're not the man cut down the cherry tree, are you? No, sir. I ain't done no work for about a year, Judge. What are you doing here? Well, Judge, I was standing from the post office. I come down here to get some work. And a policeman come on by, and I thought I'd be sociable, and I said, Merry Christmas, and he grabbed a hold of him and drug me up here and pushed me right on in jail. But I certainly wasn't doing nothing. I just down and out. You may be down, but you're not out for ten days. Lock him up, Dan. What do you want, Pansy? Well, Judge, I want to speak with you about my husband. That's what I want. You needn't cry about it. You've only been married about a week, haven't you? Yes, just a week ago, Judge. It seemed longer, but that's all it is. And what I want to ask you, what was that you give my husband? A marriage license or a liquor license? That nigga been drunk ever since I got married to him. You tell him I want him here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Well, Judge, I don't reckon he's going to be able to be here tomorrow, because he and I had a sort of fuss last night, and Dr. Creasy say he won't be out of the hospital until Thursday. You better go on home and chaperone him yourself, Panzer. Next case, Todd Saunders. Hurry him along, Dan. Todd, you're charged by Officer Lee with the attempted larceny of one pair of trousers from the premises of Lee Powell on Sawyer Swamp Road. Tell us about it. Well, Judge, I come on home last night and I pass on by Mr. Powell's house and I see a pair of trousers hang on the line in the yard and I thought Mr. Powell forgot to take them in. And I say to myself, I better take them on home and keep them for him till tomorrow some other nigga come along and steal them. That's what I thought. Why didn't you stop when the officer called to you? Well, Judge, when I hear him call, I thought maybe he called somebody on ahead, and I thought I'd run on and tell him he wanted him. You must have been going very fast when he couldn't overtake you. Well, Judge, I do walk fast. Funny thing about me, most everything I do, I do fast. You better do 60 days, see how fast you can do that. Lock him up, Dan. Next case on the docket... Robert Ransford, James Monaghan, and Michael Murphy. Bring out that delegation, Dan. Is your name Ransford? Yes, Your Worship. Robert J. Ransford, the British subject. I'm quartermaster on the steamship Estia. Your name Monaghan? Yes, sir. James Francis Monaghan. What's your name? Michael Thomas Murphy. You see a charge by officers Tate, Curtis, Paget, Tolliver, Gray... Lucky they didn't have to call out the militia to get you here. You charged on three separate counts, drunk and disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and murderous assault and battery on the body and person of each other. Tell us about it, Ranford. Well, Your Worship, I come ashore last night off of my vessel about five bells to do a bit of shopping. And going back aboard ship, I stopped into a near beer saloon, and I had a flask in my pocket, and I've asked those two Irishmen who were in there to have a drink with me. We've had several drinks, and had a bit of a song and a story and getting along very nicely. And about midnight, the little Irishman asked me very casually, how long are you in America? And I thought I'd make a bit of a joke, and I said about five foot eight, and that's all I remember. I remember hearing a lot of glasses breaking after that, and then I heard that big Irishman say very distinctly, throw him out a window. The little chap said no, take him up another flight. Then everything got dark, and when I returned to consciousness, I was back here in a cell. I should never have been brought here, worship. You want to say anything, Monaghan? Not a word. Murphy told me to keep my mouth shut. 
You anything to say, Murphy? I have, Your Honor, and a whole lot. Monaghan and myself were drinking last night here in a near beer saloon. Without a word of warning, in he comes. And without ever being introduced to us, says he in a loud, vulgar voice, will you have a drink? Well, since that to save trouble, we will. We're drinking very quietly, and Monaghan and him have words and go to the floor. I don't know what come between them, but I didn't want Monaghan to be alone, and I went with him. We gave him a good beating and wouldn't be here now, but for Monaghan. I have him two squares away before the police come at all. But Monica sees him carrying the lad down to the jail, and nothing will do him, but he goes down and tries to get in and beat him again. And I went down to pace the fire with the fire with his grab. I reckon you all been drinking a little too much. Four and a half apiece and cough. That'll be 5.25. But, Your Worship, do I understand you correctly? The task to pay 5.25 for every minute, not just? You'll pay to go to jail if you don't. You got any money, Monaghan? I had a dollar thirty when I was brought here, but the police robbed me. You haven't been robbed. I got that here in the desk. Have you any money, Murphy? I had me wish to pay a ten dollar note and two ones, and the same fellow trimmed me. You haven't been robbed or trim. You've been searched. I got it. He gave us a good test. If your honor don't mind, take the both fines out of my twelve. Monaghan hasn't enough, and I wouldn't leave him here in the jail. That'll be ten fifty. Take it and welcome. It's well worth it. Yes, Mr. Brown? What is it, Henry? You want to come to a circus parade? If you want to see it, you better come on. It's coming right down Washington Avenue. Dan, you better lock up those other niggas for a half hour. Here comes that circus parade. I'm going out seeing. Court. Adjourned.